Our next guest is not falling into the trap of monitoring every word from the Fed or worrying about bond yields or even tech multiples. He says the best way to pick your next investment should push those concerns to the side and focus on key company metrics. And he's looking at one in particular. With me now is David Bonson, the chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. David, it's great to have you back. So drum roll, please. What do you think is the most important thing for investors to focus on these days? Well, I'm a big stickler for dividend growth, and I think that that free cash flow generation from which comes the growing sustainable dividends that we love to see is itself the mark of a great healthy company. So you kind of get two things at once. You get the actual benefit of the dividends into your account, either reinvesting for compounding accumulation, or if you're an income-oriented investor, you're actually getting about three times the cash flow that you can get from the treasury market or from the S&P 500. But you're getting it all from what I believe are higher quality companies, better balance sheets and more stable business models. Do you think dividend stocks, David, tend to benefit um, from this kind of stock screen selection? In other words, that, uh, you know, people tend to want to own them because of the yield or are they generally not in favor because they're not, you know, the super high flyers, the fang stocks, you know, the trendy stocks of the day? There's definitely no question that dividend growth was less in favor relative to FANG over those uh, four or five years that FANG went to stratospheric valuations. But I think that over time, when you go back to like, let's say 1990, 30 years, the dividend growers isolated far outperformed the overall market. So the idea that people have to give up performance to go this route, I think is misguided, but it is true in certain quarters or even certain years. But fundamentally, we think you get better companies. And the reason why is you avoid a lot of the big things that go wrong. We can focus on the success stories in high growth, high tech, but there's plenty of failures too. And you get to avoid a lot of those. One more question before I ask you for some specific names here, but is it getting harder to find these dividend stocks because stock buybacks have become such a huge way uh, for companies to sort of reinvest cash. Yes, I mean, the one thing I would say is I don't believe a lot of companies doing high stock buybacks are reinvesting the cash. I think the bulk of it is going just to replace the stock they gave away in employee compensation. Hmm. So I think that stock buybacks are largely driven by executive compensation from options and restricted stock. But there's definitely no question, especially in the technology suite, that a lot of companies prefer stock buybacks to uh, or, or no capital return at all to dividends. However, if you look at the higher quality companies and you look at the more mature technology companies, you have not gotten the price return out of Cisco, Intel, IBM, but they got to a point where their cash flow generation was so high and the opportunities to go reinvest the cash so low, they became great dividend payers. Microsoft famously did it uh, right after the time of the dividend tax cut about 15 years ago. So we think there are plenty of opportunities, but we have to go screen for them. And more importantly, Kelly, we have to continue screen screening because we don't trust them to keep the dividend going. It's our job to monitor it, to make sure sure that that dividend growth is sustainable. So you mentioned IBM and Chevron, I I believe, but H&R Block, um, Midstream Energy Income ETF, the UMI is also on that list. For investors who listen to this, though, I I mean, I guess this is the sort of how you make the the point to to work with your firm. But if they say, well, wait a minute, I want to be able to kind of pick something and not have to overly monitor it. You know, I, I get the sense that most people who want, you know, steady dividend income are not really wanting to have to go through and rescreen for this stuff all the time and figure out, you know, how much they should turn over their portfolios. Yeah, I actually don't like coming on TV to talk my book. And so you're kind of forcing me to because I agree. It isn't something that can be done, I think, with passively. It's not something that is easily indexed. There are uh, passive ways to go about doing it, but you still end up with AT&T and General Electric and other names that end up cutting their dividend. Right. And so for us, that's heresy. We We don't believe in it. But I do believe it requires professional management. I'm just not saying that to talk my book. It's sort of part of the philosophy of dividend growth. Or maybe why it hasn't been more popular, uh, you know, for people to yeah. do it themselves. Yeah, for sure. David, thanks so right. much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thanks, David Johnson with the Bonson Group.